Hey everybody, I'm excited to show you guys this cool little inexpensive digital storage scope from Seed Studios, www.seedstudio.com you can see here. Nice little single channel storage scope. Um, comes from China and they've got a, uh, a little manual if you go to their website describes how to use it however there's some um, some uh, some concerns in the translation from Chinese to English but other than that it's pretty good this is the back side of it it comes with a, a little cover as well keep it protected look on the side here there's the power switch on the side which is very important You've got a beautiful little color display right here some menu selection buttons on the side we got an A and B function control button on the top. And on the other side, we have a USB connection to the computer, which is useful for downloading images from this screen to your computer so you can up upload them to your instructor or whatever. Let's start by powering it up and see what we got. Got a beautiful little splash screen. And we got a scope that shows up with two traces. This is only a single channel scope. We only have one channel coming in. And that channel is represented by this little line right here. But there's no signal coming in. The second purple channel is actually a memory. So this has been recorded previously and is being stored on the display. Um, you can change this to be whatever you want it to. But for now, we can just ignore it because it's really not of any use to us at this point. We have a indicator here. Uh, this little indicator says auto. This tells you what kind of trigger mode we're in. It's going to automatically trigger as opposed to manually trigger. At this point, we can change that. Uh, this is the volts per division. Each one of these radical spacings here is one division. So we can see it's one volt per division. One volt would be from there to there, from there to there, another volt there, another volt there. 20 microseconds is the time base. So 20 microseconds per division means between this division and that division, and between this one and that one, and this one and that one, is 20 microseconds of time. So as we sweep the time across, uh, we're doing 20 microseconds per division. This over here is the trigger. Now the trigger for this particular scope is a falling edge trigger. Uh, right now it's set for falling edge, and it's set for about 200 millivolts. Beside that, we got a battery indicator. If your battery starts to get a little low, plug in the USB port and um, you should be able to plug it into your laptop or your PC or whatever and charge that sucker up. YN, YN is for setting the, uh, the volts per division, the Y axis. XN is for making adjustments to the X axis. Uh, TR is for making adjustments to trigger. And then we have some other features down here, which we will get to uh, later on. So this is the basic, uh, basic oscilloscope. Now it comes with a couple of probes, which is really cool. Um, one set of probes, they just plug in with the standard uh, 310 plug here, just an audio plug. And uh, this one plug has uh, just pin connectors on it, which are useful for plugging into uh, uh, any standard IDC style female socket like that or a breadboard makes makes it great for hooking, hooking up to your Arduino or other small microprocessor projects. The other probe set we have, same end, comes with a couple of clips, little clips and these clips can be opened up by squeezing them and you can see the little hook and the hook can grab a hold of a, a wire for instance if you have a, a small wire or a lead you can grab a hold of that with this hook and it makes a nice connection. And there's two colors here, white, which is the positive lead, and black, that's the negative lead. So let's start by actually hooking it up to uh, a simple signal and see if we can do some adjustments, make a, make a sensible display. So I'm gonna start by plugging it in. So you can see the probe connection goes into the top here. Plug in the probe connection. Right now you see a little bit of rippling going on here because we're getting some noise. I mean, if I was to touch my finger to this, I would probably be able to get even more noise. Now what we can do is take this and plug one side into ground and the other side, let's plug it into frequency. So now you can see a, a non-triggered waveform showing up right here. Now, my uh, function generator, which is this Elenco trainer, is set to triangle wave. I'm gonna set it to uh, sine wave. You can see right here, 
and now we have a bit of a sine wave. We can now set up the, uh, the time base on this thing. So why don't we go to the up and down arrows. You can see the up and down arrows lets me select the menus that I'm going to be choosing. So if we go to um, YN and press OK, you're going to see we can now adjust the Y ranges, the probe attenuation, uh, the fit range, the offset for Y. We can set two cursors uh, or we can just hide it. So let's go to YN like we did. There we go up to the YN. Select OK. Oops. Select OK. And let's choose the Y range. Now you see this is flashing over here. That tells you where we can now set the Y range. And we'll do that with this particular uh, control over here. This left and right arrow lets me set the range to whatever I want. It looks like if I set it for around 5 volts per division, I get the, um, I get the waveform get reasonable size on the screen. Okay, let's go back into that YN selection. And let's, you notice the waveform is a little low on the scope. I'd like to bring it up toward the middle. So let's do a little Y offset. So let's go down to the Y offset and we'll select that one. And then we'll just move up like that. Oops. Go here. We must have made a mistake. Choose Y offset and then choose the left and the right arrows to raise it up. There we go. You can actually see the zero volt line is showing up right here at the top. Now I can change my DC offset to bring that up closer to the, to the top or I can move my DC offset down to the bottom. So that's right about the middle and that's probably where we want to have it. Now you'll notice that the uh, the display itself is still rolling and we don't want to have it roll like that. So we'll fix that with the trigger. So we're going to move down to the trigger level. And now I've selected trigger and I'm going to select threshold. And now I can move the left and right arrows. Do you see that little arrow, that little line right here? That's a trigger threshold. And if I can put that threshold, go back here again. Select trigger threshold. If I can move that threshold with these arrow lines into the waveform, suddenly the waveform sinks. It locks in. So you can see where the trigger crosses this radical here, the, the sweep starts. Now, this display seems a little on the small side, so let's see if we can make the display larger. Well, we'll go back to XN, the the x-axis. Actually go to x-axis, select that one and now we can select the time base and if we start to adjust the time base, right now it says 5 microseconds per division. You can see it really stretches out. Now we have 10 microseconds per division. So from this point to this point, 10 microseconds. And now we're at um, 20 microseconds per division, so on and so forth. So I can, I can change my time base to whatever I want to get whatever size wave I want. I can also go up to the Y controls, select OK. Go up to the Y range, select OK. And now I can increase the size of the waveform. Okay, and there you have the basic operation of this little oscilloscope. Uh, you try it out. You can see if you can get various waveforms to trigger nicely on your display. We'll talk about measurements in the next video.